guys and welcome back for another video. So today we're going to be taking a look at a conversation between trans women and actual women. They have differing opinions on what makes a woman strong and what it actually takes to be a woman and me and Mike would like to comment on it. It's been a while since the hub's been in the videos, huh? I've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. I'm not, I'm not able to have children. So I'm still strong, I'm, I'm funny, I'm physically strong. I'm, I'm smart and I have a lot of strength. I don't believe that having a baby is the greatest strength because not all of us can. I cannot have kids due to medical issues um, from a medical procedure that I had when I was younger. And it's, uh, it's a hard subject to talk about. It it's, doesn't mean I'm any, I'm any less of a woman, but can we get another question? I don't, I, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's, I'm sorry. One of the things that I regret was the fact that I would, would never be able to do that, but I was honored in the ability to participate it from the other side. Women are amazing. They don't just deal with that. So. Uh, while giving birth is not a woman's greatest strength, I do think that only biological women are capable of going through that process and, and bringing life into the world. I need to push back on that because we're also forgetting that trans men and trans masculine people can also give birth as well. And I don't think it's fair to just set it on one group that says that just biological women have that power to just give birth. And we have to be very clear when we look at the nuances of birth. I recognize that there are people who have different identities. There are biological women who identify as men and then go on to, to give birth. Uh, I would argue, however, that those people are still biological women. I would argue that those people are still biological women too. And I think that person, that trans woman, whoever that is, is definitely reaching by saying, oh, well, trans men can give birth. Well, they're not actually men. They're biologically women. They have a womb inside of them and a period that comes every month that allows them to be able to fertile, you know, make eggs and then allow men to put sperm in their bodies and fertilize them. Okay, I would say if you base it off of just, can I say old school Bible principles? Old school Bible principles, it was like the, the, the commandment he gave Adam and Eve was to be fruitful and multiply. That said, if we just go back to that sheer commandment, you, you pretty much failed as a man and a woman if you're not able to give birth. Now, I'm, I, now I know there's complications with, you know, what, uh, what should I say, naturally born women having children, and there might be some naturally born men who are sterile. But taking them out of the equation, if you took a healthy, normal man and compared it to some type of trans man or woman or a healthy, normal woman and compared it to some type of trans, um, trans, it's still going to be the same thing. The, the, the trans, they're not following the natural order. So therefore, their use, their roles as their, what should I say, as their genders are kind of useless. Yeah. And I just want to point out the fact that they use three biological women who, uh, two of which I think are very attractive. And then they use three trans women who are completely unattractive. And I just was thinking to myself, they couldn't find three trans women that may have actually been cuter or something because it's almost like they picked the most manly looking women who are not convincing at all as women to have this conversation. And it's almost like they came into this fight losing just with the fact that you have these like super pretty, you know, normal women and then you have them sitting over there all ugly. I'm just gonna call it what it is, so. My whole thing is as far as a trans man or trans woman, it's like, why go through that extra? Why why not just date? I mean, a, I mean, trans women, man, I get so confused with these titles. Men who want to be women and go through that operation, they're, they're trying to date supposedly men, maybe straight or gay, I don't know at this point. But it's like, why don't you just, before you even go through all that trouble, just, just date gay or whatnot. It's like, why go through that extra knowing that normal straight men are going to reject you? I can't imagine a straight woman would want to date a trans guy. I personally wouldn't want to date a trans man. I like the fact that, you know, we got married and, you know, we can try for babies. And like, if you tricked me or something, I'd be, I'd be just as upset as a man would be if he got tricked by a trans woman. So, but that's just me, you know, but moving on. And I know that is something that can offend many, but uh, that stands as my belief. So the correct term is actually cisgendered woman. Um, cis means same. It means that you identify with the birth that you were assigned. And so, you know, I just really, really wish that we would kind of be a little bit more mutable to the terminology, because I think that's what really is going to open up that dialogue and that discussion. If I may, I think the crux of the conversation kind of comes back to our trans women women. And I think if we don't agree there, it's going to be very difficult to kind of 
keep the conversation going or even agree on the points that you guys are talking about because if we don't believe that trans women are women, then the conversation kind of ends there in terms of whether they're, like men can give birth or not, if that makes sense. I'm not sure that's the case. I feel like the ability to give birth is not like the end-all be-all of a woman's like meaning in life and uh, herself and her, her personality. And I think that if you can acknowledge that, I would also then maybe challenge the idea that womanhood, as opposed to like a female sex, like womanhood is a consistent thing that has always been one way. So how would you define womanhood? You sound like Matt Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The fact that that deep voiced trans man, woman, whatever that person is, that the older one, that what, the white one that's older, the fact that he just said that that girl sounds like Matt Walsh. No, you sound like Matt Walsh. In fact, you sound like every man possible. Like, you don't even, is this guy even on hormones? Like, is, is he doing anything other than just wearing women's clothing? He's, he put no effort into like trying to be feminine at all. Like you just like I wear I'm wearing a wig and I have a dress on and now I'm a woman. Like no. Maybe that was he meant the the point she was trying to make. I know that he <laughs> he meant the point that she was trying to make, but I just think it's like uh uh don't ever say that a woman sounds like a man when you're coming off of that deep voice. Bottom of the line, what it comes down to, if they are viewed as women, and to me the primary. What should I say? What to me sets a woman a woman and a man a man is wherever you were uh, naturally born with the reproductive organs of a woman or wherever you were naturally born with the reproductive organs of a man. Not this whole I want to change into a woman or I want to change into a man type thing. No, it's about whether you had it to begin with. Let's face it, people. Some people got them. Some people don't. I don't think any of these three particular trans women should have been used because none of them look feminine at all to me. That's why they might have picked them because they didn't want, I mean, you've seen, we've both seen some trans, trans women, is it? Trans women that it was like, wow, I would have felt for that had I not, had they not came out and said it or had they not spoken their mouth, spoken out their mouth. So it's like, maybe they wanted to pick some ones that any any guy, unless you just pure blind, could see a mile away. Dude, that's a dude! Yeah. When you're over here, fully grown man, and then you're trying to change over into a woman, and then you're mad at the rest of the world for not seeing you as that. And so I'm just going to see you as a man in woman's clothes, or vice versa, a woman in man's clothes. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's even harder for trans men, the women that try to come... Because sometimes, like I said, if you start at a younger age, you can kind of like you know, get those characteristics that'll make you look feminine. But for a woman, like a lot of us, you know, I, I mean, myself not included, but most women barely get over five foot seven inches tall. And so you're automatically going to be kind of a little guy, even if you do take all of those hormones and stuff. So it's just like a bunch of trans men running around with Napoleon complexes and Try being... dating in America. Six, six, six. <laughs> it's terrible. Like... <laughs> It's a good question. Womanhood, to me, is about standing in integrity. It is about being confident in who you are. And me, as a black trans woman, should not be a threat to you. And what I see from a lot of cisgender women is they're trying to deem what womanhood is supposed to look like. I have my own perspective of womanhood. We can coexist in the same world, but the reality is we get so stuck on parts. Having a vagina is not the only thing that makes you a woman. I'm sorry. It takes integrity, it takes courage, it takes lifting other women up. It takes those things to begin to defy womanhood and there's so many other different things. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, okay, so if I were a white person and I said blackness is about integrity and courage and kind of the same thing that you use okay. to define womanhood and then I said I want to transition into a, a black person and I'm white mm -hmm. and I'm redefining what blackness is to fit what yeah. I view it as right there's no objective reality of what blackness is would you consider that appropriation or do you think that's something I should be allowed to do I consider that dodging and I consider that comparing apples to oranges <laughs> she pointed it out so you know what I'll hand it to you is he got that woman denial thing under <laughs> right and then I love the fact that I'm a black trans woman like somehow y'all just have to accept me because I'm black 
and I'm trans. So therefore, you can't say anything to me. And it's like, uh, no, the fact that you're black is like completely irrelevant at this point. And the fact that you're sitting over there manly as hell, you're you're the biggest one out of all of them with them big old broad shoulders. You need to really relax. I like how he's denying the defining characteristic of what makes a woman a woman and trying to focus more on the character. And if you focus more on the character, then I mean, you you blur the line not only between you, yeah, you blur the line between everybody. You blur the line between black, white, man, woman, because men they men can be nurturing, they can be caring. It's not traits that a lot of guys would focus on. He said something like, "Oh, it takes integrity and standing up for other women. That's what makes a woman." No, uh, like I'm, what I'm kind of crap that is that? <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, like his his description of what makes a woman is like not what other women think. It's is the what characteristics. Makes a woman. Like, it's, he's focusing on characteristics, but characteristics can be had by both men and women. Thank you. Men so, aren't in they don't have integrity. Men can't stand up for other women. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, it's funny. He's literally just trying to remove the defining characteristics and just focus on the what should I say? the character rather than the, the actual physical parts. And that's what a lot of these trans people do because they know the reality is when they look down and they have either fake breasts or none at all, and they look down between their legs and they have a penis and testicles that they're not women. I mean, at the end of the day, this guy, woman, I can't even say woman because he doesn't pass at all. Like if you're one of those ones that can pass and I don't know, and you trick me, maybe I will accidentally call you a woman. This one, I'm not going to give him the gratification of that because you're too, you're too boxing. Like, bro, his shoulders are huge. <laughs> and then notice how he's looking at this girl, the one that was just talking Gina with all the pretty long hair and everything. He was looking at her like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, he barely wanted to hear what she had to say, probably because she's, like, killing him in looks and appearance. <laughs> Listen, they don't know what it's like to sit there and have a period every month from the time you're a teenager up until you're probably in your mid to late 40s. They don't know what it's like to carry a child, you give birth. They know what it's like to deal with a woman who's having a period every <laughs> day. They may have an idea of what it's like to deal with, but they've never experienced premenstrual cramps. They've never experienced, and you know, even some of the women on stage said that they didn't agree that um, giving birth is what defines a woman. I don't think that giving birth defines a woman either, but I do believe it's a huge part of womanhood because think about it. We are the portal to life. And you can't deny that as a man. Like, you don't carry the baby. We do. We um, bring the child into the world. We do most of the child rearing. I beg to differ. I've been carrying kids all my life. Oh, no. They right the fact here that in my two sets. <laughs> not even coming close to what it is to be pregnant. All the weight that you gain, the fact that you're gaining anywhere from 25 to 40 pounds, carrying that around right in your abdomen, all that pressure on your back, your hips, and then that final moment when your life is threatened and you're giving birth to that child. I'm sorry, I've done it once already. So I already feel like... Not that I'm superior or anything to trans women. I'm not superior to any human being. But you're not going to take womanhood from an actual woman who is an actual woman and has done what it takes to be a woman. And even if you don't give birth, the fact that you deal with having a womb and having periods and the pain involved and the blood and the grossness of it, like, they don't have any idea. They don't have to buy feminine products like you know what i'm saying like just because you go and get a cheap wig and throw some makeup on your ugly face and and some cheap shoes and a skirt does not make you a woman and i'm not going to gratify you by saying that it does and i don't care what surgeon you see i don't care what you cut off your body and add to it you are not a woman it's because race and gender identity are two separate different things because when we look at race we have to look at many many different structures of what whiteness and white supremacy looks like and how white supremacy can be manipulated into other things and what happens is the closer you are in proximity to whiteness you're able to weaponize it against other people it reminds me a lot of rachel dolezal who you know masqueraded as a black woman it really did open up many more doors of conversations around it but it's still wrong it's still not fair because Okay, so you're going to get mad at Rachel Dolezal for masquerading as a black woman. You're masquerading as a black woman. You're you're black, but you damn sure ain't a woman. Well, you know, I got to hand it to whoever picked out the people for this conversation because the fact that they picked out that one woman in the middle who, who I, I know it sounds bad, kind of lost the defining character, well, her ability to give birth. Because I'm not going to say she, she lost her... Because, I mean, just because she was born with the parts, I would say that. So she was born with the parts, so she's still a woman. But that that main, that characteristic to be able to give life or give birth, she lost that. And therefore, 
I feel this guy is trying to use that to his advantage. Like, well, she's still a woman, even though she can't bring life into this world. So therefore, if I identify myself as a woman, even though I can't carry a baby, it still doesn't make me any less of a woman than her. But it's, it's no the bottom of the line. It's like trying to pass off a bicycle as a car, a bicycle that we all know has two wheels. Maybe a trike might have three, but two wheels versus four. It's, it's, it's no way around it. Two different things. Two very different things. And all he has on is a wig and some makeup and an outfit that might be women's clothing. But at the end of the day, he is quite imposing. Like, I mean, like I said, I've seen some... Show me show me a trans woman that actually is attractive. Show me a trans woman that could convince me and trick me. And then I might, you know, be like, oh, well, you know, if I didn't know any better, you know, just you might actually pass even though you don't still technically have the parts and i don't think it's right that you should go around lying to men or anything but you know you might have a dog in this fight but when you like straight look like a guy still and you want me to call you a woman like no i can't do that i can't lie i can't be like that dog is a cat or that cat is a dog uh, they don't even have a dog in a fight because all straight guys i say straight guys because i don't know about the other guys straight guys <laughs> are thinking that kendra lamar song show me something natural i want to see some stretch marks <laughs> okay <laughs> she will still ultimately have a privilege that i as a black trans woman would not begin to have what's what's interesting is that we're we're talking about race and and gender or as we probably like to call it on our side sex race actually has a more understandable structure for people being trans Transracial race does actually exist on a spectrum. I'm biracial. Many perceive me to be black, even though I am also half white and half black. We label people like President Obama as a black president, even though he is as well. Race has never had binary markers. It does exist on a spectrum. Gender, however, does have binary markers. As much as we try, as much as we change the way that we self-present, chromosomes are not going to change. Okay. And uh, that's just a reality. All right, I'm going to bring up a little point here because you, you talked about the binary side of, of uh, gender. Mm -hmm. Well, I was born a little both. Uh, I believe my, I've never had my chromosomes checked, but since I had, I fathered two children, I'm assuming I have the correct male chromosomes. So I was intersexed, and, and there's a lot of reasons that that happens, uh, none of which are well studied or understood, but uh, a friend of mine in the uh, pediatric uh, trauma world says about one in 150 kids come out with some degree of ambiguity in their gender. For me, that, that appeared as always feeling out of place. And I, for the first week of my life, I was in the uh, surgical wards at, uh, you know, Naval Hospital in San Diego, getting pieces of me cut off. So, and then they gave me testosterone for the first 11 years of my life. I, 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 I wish the world were truly sexually binary. It would make it so much easier. <laughs> but there is a little bit of a smear. And, you know, as a trans person, I'm a very conservative trans person. Uh, um, I don't see the huge gender spectrum that a lot of people in the, in the trans community do. Do I feel better having transitioned? Yes, absolutely. I used to live in a little shell, you know, very large shell, but, uh, you know, um, but, you know, now I'm, you know, much more open about who I am. You know, is that the only thing that generally defines a woman? No, I don't think that is the only thing that generally defines a woman. Right. I think there are a lot of women who uh, may be on our side of the argument who will try to maybe invalidate your experiences by saying you, you can't give birth or you, you can't have a period. And while those things may be true, I'm sure there's a lot of other different struggles that you all are going through. And uh, yeah, I, I would truly believe that you, you probably are highly discriminated against in, in our society, and it is hard to be you. It is hard to go through the things that you go through and have to deal with some of the responses that you get from people. And, you know, it's, it's not a struggle that I would wish on myself at all. It's not a struggle I wish on my worst enemy. Trans women should be allowed to compete in women's sports. Okay, first of all, the fact that this is even a question, no. Okay, okay. Should we even rewind it really quick and just look at the size difference between them in this moment, okay? If you if you looked at those three versus those three, you can see why trans women should not be allowed to play sports with actual women. Bone density, muscle mass, lung capacity, overall strength. I meant to do that. We're meant to give childbirth. We have soft bodies, less muscle. We're not meant to sit there and, and bump bodies with dudes like that. Yes, it definitely shouldn't be a topic. Um, but as far as bone density, larger lung uh, capacity, um, more muscle mass, yes, men, men excel in all three of those categories. So, I mean, logically speaking, yes, you will be able to outperform somebody physically. I mean, it was, what was it? Was it the women's USA team that challenged, or it was some uh, female soccer, national, professional soccer ball team that challenged 
a group of 15 year old boys and they got their cans handed and these were the same women saying that we should make just as much as the guys it's just it's funny how the, the first one you know run to the stage like oh i i agree but i'm a black trans woman we should be allowed to play you know with as i tower and probably outweigh all of these women by 50 to 60 pounds like oh i, I can it's, it's like just imagine boxing just imagine taking an average guy and putting him against an average woman in boxing none of them have been trained but just just the fact that it's an average guy and an average woman you know what Nine times out of ten, if they both haven't been trained and they're both average among their, their categories, more than likely that guy is going to mangle that woman. Most of the transgender people come out after adulthood. Like, look at this guy. You can tell he had supposedly two kids. The old one, the big one. He was like, I have two uh, adult children. So in other words, he waited until after he had already lived his adult life as a male to decide to transition. Well, also he was saying that he was born with two body, two of the parts. Now, in situations like that, I have heard that. I've heard that case. I'm not going to say it's rare, but, you know, it, come on. It, you don't run across too many people that that happens That's to. That's super they're, rare. Unless they're keeping it under wraps. But in that case, I think the parents and probably even the doctors looked at which sex they felt was more Convincing. dominant yeah. on him. And it was like, let's, let's make let's, him a boy. Yeah, let's, let's make him Obviously, a boy. Obviously, he was able to procreate. So his penis and his testicles were able to produce sperm, whereas he may have had you know, labia or something, but not a full grown uterus and fallopian tube. An intersex person, yeah, you kind of, you're, you're one of those people that, you know what, I can't say a whole lot about because you were born that way and, you know, it's physical and we can see it. But when you were born, you know, supposedly cis male or cis female, we can see what you have. It's not mistakable at all. And then you come out later in life as a fully matured, grown up man and you just want to just you know, you're six foot nine and you want to just turn into a, a woman, put heels on and try to convince us like most of those people are not convincing. I say most people who actually have a full grown, blown, tr like change, sex change, they end up regretting it later on if they had it too young. Because um, I guess some of them just haven't got used to the notion of being in their own skin yet. That's what that was an article I was reading or whatnot. But they said a lot of them end up regretting it. So you yeah. end up wanting to go back. To what you were born as i heard that they have like a almost 50 percent suicide rate for after having um the actual surgery to to change that's that's insane i think it's something like 42 percent like that's crazy the fact that they're killing themselves after supposedly changing their gender I do think that trans women have every right to compete in women's sports. When trans women are on hormones, the hormones break their body down. Having gender affirming surgery breaks down the body. And so I think we really need to be educated before we jump to a conclusion that trans women are stronger than cis women in sports. Hi, everybody. Uh, I find it interesting that you assume the people who disagree with you are uneducated. And I, I will speak out against that. I think the research shows that uh, trans women do happen to have a biological advantage um, against biological women. Uh, even though you are taking hormones and it does start to change your body and level things out, we are talking about primarily people who have transitioned post-puberty, which means they do have male bone density, male wingspan, male hand size, feet size, lung capacity. All of these things are going against women, biological women, when trans women start to enter their spaces, their sports, and compete against them. Uh, and, and this is really concerning for me. I think for me, it's not a question of whether or not trans women can compete in sports. It's a question of how can we change the institution of sports in this country to make it equitable and to create more opportunity for cis women, People for trans women. And like, that's kind of like why I wanted to actually ask you all, like, what is your relationship to sports been? I don't think you have to have a direct relationship to sports to realize that women are being affected by this issue. And I do uh, reject the idea of equity. Uh, there is no way to, to come about an equality of outcome, which is what equity is saying. There's a reason that uh, women's sports are, are less funded and less watched than men's sports, because men seem to excel athletically and they seem to press the bounds of athleticism way farther than women do. We now exist on a slippery slope. If it's female sports, is it then female locker rooms? Is it then female prisons, which we're now seeing uh, becoming an issue here in California, where biological male inmates are being put in female facilities because they identify as women? We have to discuss as a society how much we give into the feelings of wanting everybody to be accepted and how much we are willing to do that at the expense of biological women. I think she killed it. I don't have an argument at all. She killed that, she squashed that whole conversation. Like she gave facts, she gave reasons. 
And here, the black trans guy, he ran to the seat like, yeah, you know, we should be able to play sports just so like, we can be involved. And it's like, maybe you just need to have your own light lane, you know, because you're not really men anymore. So I get that you can't compete with men, but you're not, you're not women. So you don't need to be beating us up and running us down trying to play sports with us either. So it's like, maybe y'all just need y'all own league, a league of your own. Yeah, good luck with that. Cause who's gonna watch it? Like, <laughs> it's already hard enough to watch regular women play, like, let alone, tr no one's gonna watch that. I mean, <laughs> I let's mean. put it like this. Most people wanna watch the man's sports. Most people don't wanna watch the women's sports because they don't compete on the same level of men. So let's be honest, who wants to watch the in-between? Nobody a lot of these films that have these woke films or these films that focus on trans um they're only they they wouldn't be able to really last or even get paid they would probably get paid far less than the women because the percentage of people that they are actually um targeting is is much more smaller mm -hmm. it's like they say they're like the the one percent group yeah yeah you, i can believe it i mean now um gender identity and binary on all that that's kind of been like a trend probably for the last 10 years or so and people have been more accepting of all these different varieties of people so that may change 50 to 100 years from now can, can, but yeah it is around one percent now we, can we be honest i think a lot of people it's it's we say it's accepting but i think it's more like being forced because a lot of people their freedom of speech, as far as a, a straight person or a conservative person, whatever you call it, their freedom of speech is being attacked in ways of, oh, you're you're transphobic, you're fatphobic, you're you're homophobic, and blah blah blah. Let's take them down, let's cancel them down. Well, you know what? No, you're basically silencing you, the person's freedom of speech, saying it's hate speech or whatnot. It's not hate. Nobody's saying go out there and kill these people. But if you have an opinion and you want to express it, let's just be honest. Um, I think. Dave Chappelle calls them the letter people. I'll say the letter people and maybe just not even the letter people, but just highly liberal people are just trying to silence the voice of conservative people all around. Yeah. And when it comes to trans people, like I said, you know, I, I don't have a problem with people trying to be who they are. But when you, you know, you look one way and then you try to tell me that I'm not seeing it like you're, you're you look like a dog but you're trying to tell me I'm not seeing a dog, I'm seeing a cat, that's when I have a problem with you. Because now I feel like you're not only delusional, but you're trying to make me seem crazy for what my lion eyes is looking at. And I'm not convinced by a lot of you. I mean, especially the ones that come off all, you know, like you got like the, what's that one guy's son? Um, Magic uh, Damon, Johnson. No, oh, that, well, Magic Johnson. I yeah, thought it was I, like Wayne Wade or something like that. Yeah, he may have a son like that too, but I'm pretty sure Magic Johnson has a son that's um like that. And he's huge. Like the dude is like six feet, you know, plus he's a big guy. He looks manly. I have a bone to pick with just, what should I say, TV period when it comes to the black community. Because if a lot of you guys are paying attention, they are pushing a, a homo narrative among the black people heavily. And almost every show, every major show is some black um, person in there that's homosexual. Now, I'm not gonna say they don't exist, but why is it that it's in so many shows? So many shows, just think about it. Even this best man's um, series that a coworker of mine was watching. One of the guy's children in there was was homosexual. It's like, is, is, is it really running rapid in our community like that? Or do you think it's being pushed? That's just my opinion. Yeah, you guys definitely leave us a comment and tell us what you think about this video and what Mike just said. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.